So welcome to my video on hyperbolas and how to graph them. I received a special request from a very kind man to make a video on this topic. So I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Jonathan Ball and all of his students. This video is for you guys. So there's some common characteristics of hyperbolas that I want to go over before we start with our example. These are just some things that you should know before you actually get started doing any hyperbola example. And the first question that I always get a lot is, how do you know if the hyperbola points up or down or if it points left or right? It's a very good question. So I gave you two examples of one that's pointing up and down here on the left. And notice how the first term for this hyperbola on the left is the y term. If the y term is first, then we know that the, the hyperbola is pointing up and down. And we know that if the x term is first for this example on the right, then we know that the hyperbola is pointing to the left and to the right. So those are two very important things that you need to know before you start graphing. Also another common question that I get is how do you know the difference between a hyperbola and an ellipse? Because the equations for both are very similar and the major difference between the hyperbola and the ellipse equation is this minus sign. If you see a minus sign in between the two terms, you know it's an hyperbola. If you see a plus sign in between the two sign uh, in between the two terms, then you know it's probably a ellipse or maybe maybe a circle. But um, this minus sign means that it's always going to be a hyperbola if there's a minus sign in the middle. So having said that, I think we are ready to get started with our example. So let's just get started right away. Scroll down a little bit. All right, so here we have the example y minus 1 squared over 9 minus x minus 2 squared over 16 is equal to 1. And once again, we know this is a hyperbola because of this minus sign that's in between the two terms. All right, and the first thing we're going to find is the center. Especially when you're graphing, it's really important that you know where the center of the hyperbola is, so that is the first thing we're going to find. Our center is always written in the form h K, okay. and your h is always the term or the number I should say that is next to your x and it's always the opposite sign so since the term or the number next to our x is a negative 2 then we know our h is going to be a positive 2 and our k is the number that's next to our y term so once again we have the number 1 next to our y term and since it is a negative one then we know our k is going to be a positive one. So that's pretty simple straightforward. We know that our center is in the point 2 1. So let's plot that really quick. We're going to go to the right two units 1 2 and then we go up one unit. So here this dot is going to be our center. Alright, so now that we found our center, we're going to find out our next important piece of information, which is our vertices. Alright, so now we are going to find our vertices. And what we use to find our vertices is our a squared term. And if you don't remember from the introduction that I gave you, your a squared is always going to be your first denominator that's on the left. Alright, notice how the a squared is always before your b squared for hyperbola. No, that's, this is not the same for an ellipse, so this is only for a hyperbola. Your a squared is always going to be your first term that's in the denominator on the left. All right, so we know since our first term in the denominator on the left is a 9, that means that our a squared is going to be equal to 9. And if we know that our a squared is equal to 9, then we can find our a just by taking the square root of that. The square root of 9 is equal to 3, so our a is equal to 3. So what does this value of a represent? This is actually the distance from our center to our vertice. All right, so let's go to our center of our hyperbola. So the distance from here to our vertice is going to be a distance of 3 units, but how do we know which direction to go? Do we need to go 3 units to the right? Do we need to go 3 units up and down? So I'm going to explain how you know this. Alright, since our a squared term, which is 9, is under our y value, 
that means that our a is going to go in the y direction. All right, so our distance from our our center to our vertices is going to go in the y direction, or it's going to go up and down. All right, so we know that we have to go up three units, and we know that we have to go down three units. One, two, three. And I'm just going to erase these two little dots that I made in the middle here. All right, so now we have our center plotted. We have our both of our vertices plotted. And the next thing we're going to do is find out what our b value is. We know that the b squared term is always the second denominator, or the denominator on the right of the hyperbola. So we can say that our b squared is equal to 16. And in order to find our b, we just need to take the square root of 16, which is equal to 4. So our b is equal to 4. And finding our b is really important for graphing our asymptotes. All right, And our b is the distance from the center in the opposite direction of your vertices. So it's 4 units. Our vertices go in up and down 3 units. So our our b is going to go right and left four units. So I'm going to plot those points. I'm going to go one, two, three, four units to the right, and one, two, three, four units to the left. And now what I like to do in order to plot my asymptotes is to make a rectangle with a straight up and down line from this point, straight up and down line from this point. And from our vertices, I make a straight right to left line. Notice how I'm making a rectangle. And the asymptotes always go through the center and through the diagonals. So one asymptote is going to go through the center, through these diagonals. And the other asymptote is going to go through the center, through the other diagonals of the rectangle. And I apologize for my horrible drawing skills. I'm hoping, you, I'm hoping you think I'm a better teacher than I am an artist. All right, so now we're ready to draw a semi-accurate graph of our hyperbola. So I'm just going to start with this vertice. And we know that it never touches the asymptote. So it goes something like that. And then it also goes the other direction. Once again, it never touches the asymptote. And you need to do the some, same thing for the other vertice, going the opposite direction. Once again, it never touches the asymptote. And once again, for the other direction. So this drawing looks really terrible, but I hope you get the idea. So at this point, you might be done with your homework problem, but sometimes they ask you to actually find the equations of the asymptotes. So I'm going to teach you how to find the equation of the asymptotes. And a lot of textbooks like to teach you two separate equations, one for if it, the hyperbola is pointing up and down, and one for the, if the hyperbola is pointing to the right or the left. I think that's extremely confusing. So what I like to do is just using the, I just use the equation of the line of a line in point slope form, which is just y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And the reason why I like using this formula is just because it works for every type of hyperbola that you have, you can use this equation to, to find the equation of the asymptote. So our y1 and our x1 is just going to be any point that is on that is on the line. So we know that the center is definitely on the line of the asymptote. So our center, which is 2, 1, is going to be our x1 and our y1. Once again, our center is going to be our x1 and our y1. All right, so we have our equation y minus y1, y minus y1, our y1 value is the y coordinate of our center, which is 1, is equal to our m, which is our slope. The first slope we'll deal with is the, the, the equation, or the slope of the asymptote that's pointing down to the left and up to the right. I just, I'm drawing over it right now, if you can't tell. All right, so the slope of this line, if you, if, you, if you take a look at the center point and you take a look at the other point that is on the, the diagonal, these two points right here, 
Notice how it goes up one, two, three units, and it goes to the right four units. And since it goes to the right, that's a positive four. So our slope is going to be three over positive four. And our x minus x1, our x1 value is just going to be our h value, which is two. Once again, that's just our x value for the center. Um, so now you have found the equation for one of the asymptotes of our hyperbola. <clears throat> so now let's find the equation for the other asymptote, which I'm drawing over with my cursor right now. Hopefully you can see it on your computer. So once again, our y1 and our x1 is going to be the same because this asymptote also goes through the, ten uh, also goes through the center. So y minus y1, our y1 value is 1 is equal to the m, or our slope. Uh, the slope of this line, notice if you start at the center, and if you go to this point in the top left diagonal, notice how it goes up 1, 2, 3 units, and it goes to the left 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So since it goes to the left, it's going to be a negative number. Okay, so instead of positive 3 over 4, it's going to be negative 3 over 4. So our slope is going to be negative 3 over 4, and I'm running out of space here, so I'm just going to move this to the bottom left. And this is all multiplied by our x minus our x1. Once again, our x1 is just our x value of the center, which is just 2. So now we have found our equation for our other asymptote. All right, so these two, this is the equation for one of them. And this is your equation for your other asymptote. So there's one last thing that your homework might ask you to find, and that is your foci. Uh, the equation for the foci is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So our c squared is equal to our a squared, which is 9, plus b squared, which is 16. So our c squared is equal to 9 plus 16, which is 25. And our c is going to be equal to the square root of 25. So our c is equal to 5. So what does this value of c represent? Uh, the value of c is equal for, uh, to the distance from your center to your foci. And once again, because our hyperbola is going in the up and down direction, we know that this distance is also going to be going in the up and down direction. All right, so our distance from the center point to our foci is going to be five units. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five. Here is one foci. And our other foci is going to be a distance of five units, five units down. So we go one, two, three, four, five. All right, and I didn't label the actual coordinates of the points. I should probably do that. So this, this point, this foci all the way at the top goes over to the right two units, and it's up one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is point two. Six. Um, our top vertice goes over to the right two units, one, two, and it goes up one, two, three, four. So this is the point two, four. Our center we know is the point two, one. Our bottom vertice is you go over to the right two units, one, two, and you go down one, two. So this is the point two, negative two. And our bottom foci is you go over to the right two units, one, two, and you go down one, two, three, four. So we know that this is the point two, negative four. So once again, I apologize for my horrible artistry. I hope you enjoyed this video, though, and I hope you are getting a better idea of hyperbolas. I will be making some videos on ellipses and parabolas as well, so stay tuned. And until my next video, I will see you guys later.